Episode number 28, it's called Gaza. Uh, as we all know, Gaza and the Gaza Strip on the border of the Mediterranean Sea is in the news almost every day. Rockets flying from Gaza into Israel. When you're a Jewish person and you live in Sderot, which is a village close to the Gaza Strip, you will have the risk to be hit by a rocket every day. So there is a kind of fence around Gaza with electronic safety and Israelis are guarding the fence, but the rockets fly over and in recent days I think over 600 rockets came from Gaza. Years ago uh, the Jews voluntarily left the Gaza Strip. There were the peace negotiations with the Palestinians and the principle was land for peace. If you Jews give us some land, we will give you peace. So they claimed the Gaza Strip and said, well, if you leave the Gaza Strip, you'll have peace. And so the Jews it was a difficult decision because these Orthodox Jews had developed the land there. It's sand dunes, it's absolutely barren land, the Gaza Strip. But they managed to get their greenhouses and growing their tomatoes and lettuce, etc. They were so proud of it that, but they said, okay. So they were taken out of the Gaza Strip and that was, and then they hoped for peace. It's an example of all these peace negotiations that Israel has with the Palestinians. All kind of promises are made. Sometimes Israel takes incredible risks, accepting a certain plan, but they want peace. They're an old people and they're bleeding from many wounds. For centuries, Jews have been murdered and killed. And today they say one Israeli soldier that dies to defend his country is one too much. We must have peace. So they are willing to risk incredible things. But instead of getting peace, soon after Gaza was left voluntarily, the Palestinians celebrated it as a victory. They had driven out the Jews from the Gaza Strip and started to again launch their rockets to neighboring villages around the Gaza Strip. Now, when you look at Gaza, you might think, was it part of the promised land? God promised the land to the Jews. It's not a big land. I'm coming from Holland. Uh, you can hardly find us on the map of the world because we're so small. But Israel is even smaller. You can hardly find it. But God said, it's my land and I give it to you, hey, my Jewish people. So, but was Gaza also part of that promised land? Yes, it was. When you read Joshua 15, you read this. And it's talking about the allotment for the tribe of Judah in the Promised Land. Ekron, with its surrounding settlements and villages, east of Ekron, all that were in the vicinity of Ashdod, together with their villages, 
Ashdod, its surrounding settlements and villages, and Gaza, its settlements and villages, as far as the Wadi of Egypt, which is a small river down south, and the coastline of the Great Sea, which is the Mediterranean Sea. So Gaza is specifically mentioned as part of the allotment for Judah. And so it is part of the Promised Land. Now, many criticized the Israelis and said, it's in the Bible, it's your land, why do you leave it? Well, they said, peace is more important than land. The Lord promised it to us, and so we're sure one day he will give it to us, but maybe not yet. And if we hand it over and we get peace in return, let's try it. Well, I told you, it didn't work at all. It was celebrated as a victory by the enemies of Israel. So I think there's a lesson for the Israelis and for the Jewish people to simply trust God and his promises and act upon his promises and not trust whatever the enemies or other nations are promising Israel. Israel ultimately has only one friend and that's the God of Israel. But one day they will be back in Gaza because the Lord promised. It's part of the promised land for the tribe of Judah. And you can even read it in Sephania 2. There it says in verse 4, in the second chapter of Sephania or Zephaniah, Gaza will be abandoned and Ashkelon left in ruins. At midday, Ashdod will be emptied and Ekron uprooted. The same cities that we heard in Joshua 15. Woe to you who live by the sea, O Keratite people, the word of the Lord is against you, O Canaan, land of the Philistines. When you hear the Palestinians pronounce their name, they say Philistines. But God says, the word of the Lord is against you, land of the Philistines. I will destroy you and none will be left. The land by the sea where the Keratites dwell will be a place for shepherds and sheep pens. And to whom will it belong? It will belong to the remnant of the house of Judah. There they will find pasture. In the evening they will lie down in the houses of Ashkelon. The Lord their God will care for them. He will restore their fortunes. So they will be back in Gaza because God promised and everything God promised he will fulfill because he is a faithful God. Mm -hmm.